We have uh, gentleman James Donaldson, CEO of Copperhead Security, joining us on the show today. How's it going, James? Hi, guys. How are you? We're doing awesome. It's great to have you here. I want to start off with this because basically you, um, your, your company, Copperhead uh, Security, creates Copperhead OS. And we had uh, Evan Blass, a.k.a. Evleeks, on the show weeks ago, not too long ago. And uh, one of the things that he mentioned while he was here, and he kind of showed off to a certain degree, is Copperhead OS, and he was super impressed by it. He had some really great words, and we, <laughs> I think, because we had not really dove into Copperhead OS at that point. So when he kind of mentioned it, we started looking around. We were like, "Wow, this is like, this is really cool stuff." So we wanted to get you on and uh, kind of chat with you a little bit about what Copperhead OS is, uh, the state of security for Android, because we, you know, these stories are always popping up in the news. And, uh, you know, <laughs> you never know whether whether it's something to be super concerned about or whether it's just, you know, a, a great news piece, a great news item to throw in there. So thanks for coming on tonight. Really appreciate it, especially considering we had a late start. So it's, it's awesome to have you here, James. It's good uh, to be here. Thanks. Um, so tell us a little bit about Copperhead OS. Just, just, just right off the top here, um, explain what Copperhead OS is specifically and why you and your team uh, were compelled to create it. So, I mean, <clears throat> a lot of what I'm going to be explaining is uh, high-level explanations. Sure. Uh, Copperhead, you know, we're well known for being able to delve into the really nitty-gritty technical explanations of things. Uh, if you look at our technical overview, it's really, really highly technical. So I'm here to, to give you kind of high-level explanations. So. Simply put, uh, Copper OS is a secure Android variant that focuses on security and privacy. Uh, it's completely open source, and it combines bleeding edge security uh, technology and mechanisms to uh, protect its user users, and it's free to download and flash on any Nexus devices. So anyone can install this. Um, obviously, enthusiasts are very, you know, <laughs> Android enthusiasts, and a lot of the people that follow this show and watch this show weekly are comfortable um, with this, uh, so installing this the same way that they would install, let's say, Cyanogen Mod OS or whatever on a does their their device, I guess, you know, would ha obviously have to be unlocked in order to do that. Is that right? Uh, Cyanogen Mod's installer is, I would say, very very straightforward. It's really good for seamless installing. Uh, so to, I mean, to do it, to flash it the old school way by uh, you know uh, using the flash all script that comes with. Well, it comes with the download. It'd be something where that's how you'd be putting it on your device. Mm -hmm. um, so, <clears throat> for Cyanogen Mod users that are used to being able to click in and download and install a script, and Cyanogen Mod walks you through it, it's not really like that. But if you click on our documentation and you look at, uh, yeah, installing, all the steps necessary for installing are there, including verifying the packages, including making sure your device is locked afterwards as well. What are some of the, I guess, because, you know, for, for people who aren't familiar with Copperhead OS at all, what are kind of some of the marquee features? What makes Copperhead OS more secure than other variants of Android out there right now? So Copperhead OS, first and foremost, is is open source. So <clears throat> this is actually surprisingly uh, pretty rare in the mobile space, is that there isn't really open source security ROMs out there where you can just look at the source on GitHub. Uh, you can talk to developers in IRC. A lot of them are closed source solutions. So, I mean, the first and foremost important thing with Copper OS is that it's open source and you can look at it. Uh, you know, the technical security mechanisms that are really important, Copper OS, there, I mean, there's numerous, there's numerous security mechanisms, but some of the more important ones are open BSD memory allocator, automatic automatic inter, integer overflow checking, uh, Zygo uh, spawning using exec rather rather than uh, how Android usually does it. And what this uh, essentially uh, you know, formulates is uh, an operating system that is very, very, very hard to exploit and write exploits for. Hmm. Uh, you know, the point of it is to assess, essentially increase the amount of resources that an attacker would have to expend to create an exploit for Copper OS to the point where hopefully they would just give up. Um, and obviously that creates more complexity on the OS side of things. How? What about kind of security updates? Obviously having a secure platform almost implies that there's an elevated need for, you know, the security <laughs> updates that, let's say, that Google, you know, pushes into Android, for example, that there's kind of a quick updating of the OS that in integrates uh, that sort of stuff. Is that kind of a priority for you guys as well? Absolutely. I mean, 
when you say it's a priority, we actually think it should just be uh, kind of uh, an industry standard. Unfortunately, it's not right now, which I'm sure you're well aware of that Android's so fragmented. Uh, a lot of the vendor vendors, uh, you know, defer updates, but Copper OS definitely rolls in security updates uh, alongside Google. And uh, in some cases, we've actually even started rolling in updates from out of band uh, vendors such as Qualcomm. So mm -hmm. uh, if you guys have heard of, you know, just quickly, for example, I'm sure you heard of the quad router vulnerability that was released yeah. at uh, DEF CON, right? So uh, we actually are, were the first, one of the first operating systems to patch four to four vulnerabilities for that because we rolled in their Qualcomm's updates as well as Google's into the August 9th security patch. Wow, wow, impressive. So, so James, uh, you guys aren't. I mean, we, we've we've talked a lot on the show about other companies that have attempted to make secure Android phones. Whether it's you know BlackBerry kind of entered with the Priv and and the Black right. Phone, which uh, had a lot of kind of uh, awareness around the idea of having a secure phone. What what sets Copperhead apart from those attempts at creating a secure phone? I mean, first and foremost. Copper OS, uh, you know, a lot of the security mechanisms we're in integrating, implemented, have not been done yet, right? The open BSD memory allocators has not been done on Android yet. Um, a lot of the things that are going to be coming out Android and security-wise, we actually upstream themselves. So we're so far ahead in when it comes to bleeding edge research and security because this is really a passion for us, right? We're not here to, to try to make billions and billions of dollars. I mean, that'd be super nice, but I'm just saying... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that you know we're all we're all hackers first and foremost, and this is what we are, right? So, um, you know, implementing some some cool stuff inside of the project is really you know what we wanted to start off with. So, uh, to answer your question, Ron, this is more of a passion for us, right? And because of it's a passion, we take it very very seriously, and we you know we you know what compelled us to create this was originally we started off as uh, Copperhead Security was just an information security firm that was going to be servicing. Uh, legal clients in Toronto, intelligence in industries, et cetera, et cetera. And we realized that, you know, in 2014, uh, the alternatives out there, there weren't, there weren't very many alternatives for, for hackers and people that really cared about privacy to, to use to defer communications between clients, right? There was Blackphone, there was Blackberry, there's, you know, other competitors, but all of them were closed source at the time. And, uh, you know, as, as someone who's a hacker, I don't trust closed source solutions, right? So, um, you know, if I'm going to be talking to, a, say, a criminal defense lawyer who's dealing with a lar large case, how am I going to trust that the endpoint, you know, the black phone or the BlackBerry is going to be truly secured from a nation state actor? And you can't really prove that, right? So that's why we, uh, that's why we created Copper OS. And that's what's, uh, what's really changes and differentiates us between people like black phone and BlackBerry. Right. right. Yeah, that open source nature is very important, which leads me kind of my next, my next question here is about kind of Google Apps and services so often when it comes to Android devices, especially here in the U.S., you know, people are just used to, if it's, a, if it's Android, it has all of these apps and services automatically mm -hmm. baked in because that's kind of the Google flavor of, uh, of Android. People have a certain expectation. Uh, do you, and, you know, a lot of those are actually closed source, you know, uh, things that are inserted into those versions of Android. Um, are Google apps and services embedded on install? Um, why or why not at that point? So Google Apps and Google Services are not embedded on install. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple of reasons, but first and foremost, Google um, ensures that if you're going to be uh, distributing a phone with Google Apps, then you can't distribute phones without Google Apps. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the other thing is, is uh, you know, if you talk to other security companies that deal with endpoint security, giving a, a user an end user Google Play is essentially a Pandora's box, right? Uh, mo uh, you know. At any given time, the top five apps for you know flashlight or games will <laughs> yeah. have malware in it, right? It's not might have malware; it's will have malware in it. And uh, you know, giving a user who is not really concerned about security, who also expects the security to be baked into the device, uh, I mean, that's just a recipe for disaster. So, Copper OS does not come with uh, Google Apps and Google Play services. Uh, it actually does come with our an open source application delivery platform called FDroid who are friends of ours and privacy partners involved also with uh, something called the Guardian Project. And uh, so when you download or buy a device off us, so download the ROM and buy a device off us, it comes with FDroid and on FDroid they have open source applications. And uh, you know, using FDroid's platform, you can actually determine if you want to download an app or not. Like for example, Telegram, the, uh, you know, the infamous privacy uh, platform, their clients open source, so that's actually on FDroid. 
But uh, some of the stuff involved with Telegram, such as the encryption and the server side, uh, the server side infrastructure is closed source. So Ftroid will actually warn you if an application has these issues, right? So it gives really the user the chance to determine if they want to do it or not. So as you see there, it has a, it has a uh, what they call a, um, an anti-privacy feature, right? So that they like to warn, they want Ftroid wants to make sure that they warn their users before they download, and that's something that's not on Google Play. And uh, so that's really important. We want to make sure that um, you know you, you don't want to be restricted not necessarily for a user downloading the ROM to not have anything. But if they're going to be having something, they should either have to hack it so they break it and therefore it's kind of out of our hands, or we leave it up to Ftroid to be able to provide the apps for them. Right, right.